Hello friends, Namaskar. While the financial year 22-23 has completed, now it's the time for the assessees to think about that which ITR form they are going to file for the relevant assessment year 23-24. So through this video, I'm trying to put up before you that what are the various ITR forms applicable in the case of an individual or HUF for the assessment year 23-24 and you may be able to decide with the help of this video that which ITR form is applicable in your case so that you may file the ITR under the correct ITR format given by the department. For to begin with, let me tell you briefly that the different ITR forms which may be applicable for an individual or HUF may be ITR 1, ITR 2, ITR 3 or ITR 4 and here in ITR 1 has a separate name given specifically called Sahaj and ITR 4 has a specific name given called Sir. Unfortunately, there is no name given to ITR 2, ITR 3 by the government of India. So you may decide the name on your own which the government of India if here may be able to decide for the future. However, ITR 2 and ITR 3 forms primarily are bit complex as compared to ITR 1 form or ITR 4 form. Now let me begin with ITR 1 form. Who may file ITR 1? For this form is applicable for individuals who are resident. So a person who is not a resident or resident but not ordinarily resident. Such a person could not form, could not file form ITR 1. A person who is having total income up to rupees 50 lakh will be able to file form ITR1. A person having income from salaries, one house property and other source income like interest, dividend, etc. would be able to fill form ITR1. And the person whose agriculture income does not exceed 5000 rupees for the financial year. So suppose you are into all other criteria that you are a resident, you are a salaried paid person, you are not having property beyond one only, you have certain interest income from saving bank, but your agriculture income is say 50,000. Then ITR1 form will not be applicable to you. There you have to go and pick up ITR form, ITR2. So these conditions if met, then you will be able to fill form ITR1. Now, another discussion is to understand who can't file ITR1. So some conditions you have already got with the previous slide which I have put up before you, but let me be more specific on it. ITR1 form is not available for an individual who is either director in a company or has invested in an in unlisted equity share or in cases where TDS has been deducted under section 194N because of the cash withdrawal beyond certain limits and in whose case income tax is deferred on ESOP because in case of ESOP the employees have option in certain cases to defer their tax liability on ESOP. So all such kind of person say for an example you are director in a private limited company you are holding certain unlisted equity share maybe the equity share of a private limited company or a public company which is not listed on any Indian browsers or in your case TDS is deducted by the bank under section 194N then you are not available to file ITR 1 that will not be available for you. In whose case total income has exceeded 50 lakh. So suppose you are an individual, maybe salary paid only, but your total income has exceeded 50 lakh, then ITR 1 can't be filed by you because in those cases you have to fill ITR 2 where you have to give the schedule of assets and liabilities as on 31st of March. And if your residential status is resident but not ordinarily resident, or a non-resident, then also you cannot file ITR1. And in such cases, you have to move towards filling ITR2 as per the requirement of income tax law. So let's move towards understanding who may file ITR2 form. ITR2 form, my dear friends, is applicable for individuals and HUFs who are not having income from profits and gain of business or profession and who is not eligible to file ITR1. So first you will start begin your journey with knowing whether ITR1 is applicable for me. If yes, then primarily you have to think of filing ITR1 only. 
But if you are not eligible for filing ITR2, then where you jump into, you jump into ITR2 by default. Assuming that you don't have any income from business or profession, then individual HR having income from capital gain because such a person could not file ITR1, then ITR2 will be applicable. Having income from more than one house properties because there was a restriction, hence you have to jump into ITR2 form. Having total income above rupees 50 lakh because in such case also you are supposed to report schedule of assets and liabilities, ITR2 will be applicable. And a person who has income under the head club inclusion, maybe a minor's income, spouse income, a son's wife income, as per the provisions of section 64, certain clubbing provisions get attracted. In all such cases, the person has to move into ITR2 for the purpose of filing his ITR, her ITR under the income tax law. Now, naturally, when my flow is who can file, who cannot file, who may file, who may not file. So I'm going to discuss here who can't file ITR2 or who can't fill ITR2. An individual HUF earning income from profits and gains of any business or profession and who has income in the nature of interest, salary, bonus, commission, remuneration due to or received by him or it from a partnership. So moment as an individual or HUF, you have participation into business profession or you are partner of a partnership firm wherein some interest, salary, bonus, commission, remuneration is due to you or received by you. You are not eligible to file ITR2. So for salaried class, either prima facie ITR1 or ITR2 will be applicable. Now, one question which you may ask me further, Anuji, suppose if I have salary income as well as business income, then can I file ITR2 form? No, sir. Then you have to move into either ITR3 or ITR4 form as the case may be. Now, going by serial, I should be first discussing with you ITR3, but I am passing that by and firstly going into ITR4 because ITR4 is uh, less cumbersome, I can say easy as compared to ITR3. So I'm first putting up that a businessman may primarily think for filing ITR4, but if ITR4 is not applicable, then such businessman has to jump into filing ITR3. So for individuals and HUF and firms other than LLP, being a resident, having total income up to rupees 50 lakh, and having income from business and profession, which is computed under section 44 AD, ADA or A. Mind you, my dear friends, when we are into income tax provisions and having business income, there are three presumptive taxation sections of chapter 4D of Income Tax Act, wherein a person may offer standard income or the income above that particular level, which is fixed under these three sections, and then this is a less cumbersome way of computing the total income, rather I can say a simple way. So if you are opting for 44 AD, ADA or A, to which I call a presumptive taxation, 44 AD is applicable for businessmen, uh, certain specified businesses, 44 AD is for professional having gross receipt up to 50 lakh and 44 A is for goods transport operators. So in these three cases, still the total income do not exceed 50 lakh rupees and the person is a resident and ordinary resident, then ITR 4 may be filled up. Further, the SSC owns not more than one house property. This is more or less similar to ITR 1 standard. No brought forward carry forward loss under any head of income. So if you have any brought forward loss from the preceding year or loss to be carried forward for the next year, then ITR 4 form cannot be by. Now let's discuss who can't file ITR 4. So ITR 4 form is not applicable for an individual who is either director in a company or has invested in unlisted equity share or if income tax is deferred on ESOP or as agriculture income more than 5000 because moment a person having business may be 44 AD specified business but suppose agriculture income is above 5000 say 1 lakh then ITR 4 form will not apply the person has to move into ITR 3. A person with residential status of resident but not ordinarily resident or a non-resident. A person having income from more than one house property. A person having income from lottery, crossword puzzle etc. And person having capital gain income because if you will go through the ITR 4 form in PDF format, you will find that there is no schedule of filling up the capital gain income related detail into ITR 4. So then where you are supposed to move, you are supposed to move into ITR 3. 
So ITR4 is simply for those businesses who are offering under 44 AD, 44 ADA or A, having income from other sources, having income from one house property. Maybe salary income can also be offered, but capital gain income cannot be offered in ITR4 form. Now I come to the last discussion on ITR3 form, which is a very lengthy form as compared to other forms, my dear friend. This ITR3 form is applicable for individual and HUF having income from profits and gain of business or profession and who can't file ITR4 form. So for such persons, ITR3 form shall be applicable. Like what you have seen with me, that suppose if a person is having business provision income where he is supposed to offer income on actual basis, say in the case of commission business, in those cases where tax audit is applicable, in all such cases, ITR3 form shall be applicable. Further, in this form, any residential status may be opted and income may be offered under any head of income. There is no restriction as such. So ITR3 form is the biggest one out of these four forms, which I told you. And this is compulsory that while you are filling up ITR3 form, you should have income from business or profession. So if you don't have business or profession income at all, then either ITR1 or ITR2 will apply on you. If you have business profession income, ITR form 3 or ITR form 4 will be applicable to you. To conclude, my dear friends, I tried my level best to put up all these four forms which are applicable for an individual or HUF. Somebody may check me saying that, Mr. Bhatia, you have not discussed about ITR form, ITR 5, ITR 6, ITR 7. Sir, they are not applicable in the case of an individual or HUF. Hence, I did not discuss about them in this video. So, it is very important for anybody to decide what is the correct and appropriate form applicable in his or her case. And if you will not be filing the ITR in the correct form, then you may be required to file a revised return later also. So please be cautious that you are filing the ITR as per the correct ITR form applicable in your case. So I hope the content of this video would have been useful, important to you. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.